Alrighty, welcome to this video. Today we're going to be talking about something very simple, but requires a little bit of just time. We're going to talk about some curved text, like just ones you normally see arched over around something or on something. There's a couple ways to do it. So, first let's grab some of our tools that we're going to need. We're obviously going to need some of our character, uh, our text tools. And of course we're also going to need our appearance tools, because... Yeah, we're going to need that for a couple of our things. So we'll need these two two elements the most out of all of the other, other setting parts here. So let's get started on this. Um, I'm just going to choose Arial for the, for the text we're going to do. Just a simple sample text here. All right, now... Just for posterity's sake, we're going to create a circle. And this is just so that that way we know roughly what we're doing is round. Um, we'll also use that circle a little bit later on for one of our design elements. Uh, so we'll, we'll go into it. So the first way of doing uh, text on an arch is very simple. Is is literally just going to the warp arch uh, arc uh, filter now this one has uh, to varying degrees it warps it down upon a center point and that center point for us is going to be right in the middle of where that text is at the very baseline so for example at 27 percent it's arched to this degree right around here so it sort of like moves that that are uh, arc all the way around like right here at 100 percent it's it's here at around 50 percent it's probably right about here and then so that it, it just uh, warps it around that that certain curve and you can go to the negative way and it does it by the baseline of where that text is so it'll be right from here it'd be up there from here it's all the way up here now if you do notice there's a lot of distortion around this one so let's go ahead and deal with some of these guys. I'm going to do two different ways to do this arch. Uh, first one is going to be around 95%, and I'll show you why. Um, we're going to bring this guy down. And now the, since this one goes by the total arch edge here, the base of this is actually on the corner of here. So we can actually drag this guy right over to here. And as you can see, you can actually probably find the exact spot of where that would be uh, centered up. But you can see how that text is sort of arched around here. And you'll see these distortion effects right around here on, uh, not so much on anything flat here. It's going to be in angled parts of the text, like this A is not straight anymore. That's why you chose Arial. It's because this one right here, you can see that there's that, that curve to this A now. Alright, so, because this deals with, with taking this text and then expanding it all out, this is actually a lot wider text now. So, if you wanted it to be the same aspect ratio, it actually has to be a lot taller. So, if you notice... Right here, it basically says that it has to be 50% wide to make it look like it's somewhere close to normal. And that's about right. A little bit of adjustment just to cover for the, that distortion. And it's it covers half of a circle. It's pretty straightforward. And likewise, if you needed to change that in your appearance to a negative 95%, You can then cover a good ha a good sphere of, of text going all the way around. I will say this: this does have its limitations. Uh, the more text you have, the better it is, because if you only have the word text and you're trying to bring it across a full arc, it does not look good. 
you see how that much distortion that is on everything. It might be something you like. It might be something that works well with the design. It sort of has like that sort of distorted look. So it might work well for it. But the more text you have, the better. Um, you can also notice how it only goes to 50%. And there's also a very limited amount of, of, of range you can have with this. There are some uh, distortions that are here. Whether that's being able to distort it from uh, your horizontal area. Which just basically makes one side thicker than the other. To your, horiz uh, to your vertical which sort of just pushes up the height of it, which doesn't really do much for this, uh, this stuff. But it's, it's options available for it. All right, let's go ahead and take this regular text, and we're going to trash out the arc on this one. All right. So once we covered this one, we've covered the the what that how how that one works and some of the limitations of it. Let's cover it with a different way. It, it's the same effect, but a different end result. Over here under object, you can also go to envelope distort, make with a warp. And if you notice, it still has this the same filter menu. And so, even if we choose 95%, like we had on this one right here, and leave everything the same, it looks exactly the same. With the exception of when this is all done, as opposed to being a live object right here that you can change the text to and modify very easily, this one suddenly has the ability to be hand warped. So it does have uh, nodes that can be manipulated and changed, just like as if we did like an uh, like our a mesh warp, but it has a has a distinct uh, filter effect to it at first. So it's really interesting because if you did have something like a wavy line going across here, you can sort of change it and modify it and do what you got to do to it. But on the also the inside here. You can also change some of the text, how it reacts, while still keeping that curve. So there are different benefits to this. So you can create more of like a, a distinct look to it that most people don't even uh, don't even remember how to, like don't even think about doing. So lots of little fun things you can do. That, that wouldn't be a normal thing. That way you can lean into some of the dis distortions and warps that you might have without having to actually uh, be affected by them. All right, now that we've covered that, the next way of doing these, these, these guys, and this is the third and, and probably the, the best one to do it with, is going to be pretty much straightforward. We're going to take these two guys, remove these, this, this over... And we're going to move this one over. I'm going to copy this circle. I'm going to paste it again. I'm going to do it about right there. All right. The next one, with an object selected, selected, we can go over to our text tool. And we can go to type on a path. This is wonderful because it's not like a, a warping, uh, warping through filters, warping through our envelope distorts or even doing doing it doing an actual mesh warp this one is just straight up typing on a path and we've we've covered this before but this one goes off of whatever node it is so i chose it off of the bottom which creates a full complete path around that circle and with it being centered we can just type right there now this one is not limited to fifty percent. 
but just like all the text, it does have limitations to how long it can go. So if you see I typed it, uh, have this repeating three times here, so there's more going on to it. If I had other text that I can link onto another line, this would be a good way of, of, of being able to link it across or letting you just know that you have text that's missing. So, a little bit of bringing that down there, and I'm going to do 27.5. So I now have that text on a full curve. It follows along that baseline, and there's a couple, couple basic effects. This one uses the type on path option under type, and it actually has a whole option set just for itself. So let make sure your preview is on if you want to mess with it. Um, for the effects, this one's called Rainbow because it just basically follows that path along that curve there. Gravity is a different one where it, where if you had a curved line, it would follow it along uh, how that baseline would follow. It sometimes changes, it sometimes doesn't. Stair step, that one's good if you just had like a wavy line. Doesn't really work with this design here. 3D ribbon, I've never been able to get this one to look good, and if you can, it's it's awesome. It's an effect, I guess. Skew, this is pretty much straightforward. It just skews it straight up and down and just follows that, that, that curve. This one's fantastic. Again, if you have like a, just a wavy line that you're doing an arc, uh, doing a type on text tool for. Um, and then, but I keep it on ribbon just because it's for round design, this is perfect. The line of path. This one's the most essential. For most of your stuff, baseline is going to be fine. But I usually choose center for one simple reason, and I'll show you. If I have text that I do want to create that has a top line and a bottom line that all read as, as left to right, and I rotate this around, it's now upside down. So if I go to my type on text tool and I flip this around, you can see how it's now, that's that's the main part of this flip part. You can see how this, let me get rid of this word here. I'm going to get rid of this word here. You can see how these two are now along a baseline. If this was on on our baseline, do you see how it follows along that baseline? The text goes along that inside here. These two lines of text don't line up. No matter how much I work, those two don't don't match anymore. So what you'd end up with is one shape that you're trying to manipulate right here to being the same size as that one. So now you have two different uh, two different sections. It's 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 terrible. But with one simple setting, go back over to your type on type on path, path tool and we choose center. No matter what we do, it's always going to be on that baseline. And so a lot of text, they're all pretty much set up to be a nice middle of the text is the baseline sort of thing. And so it works fantastic for that. But it lets you manipulate these guys. And this is where your text on uh, text tools come in. Because from here, you have more options than you do with this stuff. You have less distortions. The A's and stuff look straight up, nice straight flat angles. Because of this, you can always tell exactly where the the center uh, line of gravity is on that one. So let's grab a line tool. And let's grab a line out here. This one right here, this text to this T, comes right off that middle of that center. That one comes off the middle of that center. This one comes off of the middle of that center. So we all know where all that stuff comes from. So it all looks straightforward. There's no distortions. There's no odd wonkiness. What you will find, though, is when you have small amounts of text, and this is the where, where, where it starts to drop out, 
I'm gonna use the word text. You can already probably see it. It's right there. It's the E and the X. As you increase out those lines, you can see how they start to work into each other, into itself. Right there, there's distortions. Even when it's at the forty percent or forty point, you can see that there are gaps. So this is not fluid like the other ones. This one will have odd gaps. This one will have odd endings. So you might have to play with it. All of my text usually has around a twenty-five extra twenty-five percent uh, uh, little little spacing here. Twenty point spacing, whatever you want to call it. If it was not there, these guys would all be touching in weird spots. So, but I have more options. If I wanted to, I could space out the width very easily. Come on. You know, I can make it bigger. Not have to worry about it. I can have more spacing control. But I have a lot more of these options that I normally would. The only thing I don't have with this is the ability to use the one one key line. And that's the that's the return keys to do multiple lines. So even if I have a multiple line and I just typed in the word text for, you notice that's not there because it only reads one line and then it tries to do move it to another section. So keep that in mind that, that the more you add to this one, you'll the more you find how limited it actually is. So control C. When that was really this. So there's there's three ways of working with the same same text in different ways. I'm gonna delete this guy. And scale these guys down. Alright. So there's multiple ways of doing it. Uh, we all have different, different. Uh, these all have their different purposes. Their different ways of making things really stand out. Um, maybe in my next video, I'll create some sort of fun little sticker that I'll probably throw up on on onto a shirt design or something like that. But this is this is an easy way of doing all of your text. So hopefully this helps out with doing these different types of art texts, and hopefully I get to see something fun out of it. So uh, show me what you guys got, and then um, if you guys have any questions or comments, just let me know.